uh, GM all, we at Router Protocol are excited to launch a new series to answer all of your what, whys and whens and also hows in this brand new series that we're calling The Road to Router Mainnet. And uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Nila. I work in the marketing team at Router and I'm thrilled to be your host for the series. If you're watching this video, you must have also stumbled across our socials and seen or heard that we've announced the date of our mainnet launch, which is going to be on the 30th of July, 2024, which is nearing closer every day. So this series will help us recap everything that's been happening at Router since its conception and also what we have planned for the future. So without further ado, let's get started with episode one, which is Router Protocol so far. So glad to introduce uh, Ramani Ramachandran, or we call him Ram, who is our CEO. We also have Shubham Singh, our CTO, and Ajay Bhatt, who leads BD and partnerships at Router. Feel free to introduce yourself, guys. So maybe we can start with Ram, sir. Yeah, it, it's uh, been an exciting journey. Uh, grateful for the opportunity to be building in uh, uh, crypto. Uh, I was watching. I was been catching up with the founder the other day, uh, and and you know one of the things that uh, he mentioned and that that struck me was, you know, back in 2021 uh, there were uh, a number of projects that were launched uh, from globally and also from the broader Asian region, right? And some of them raised a lot of capital, but if you look at uh, and NFG, let's just look at uh, the Indian subcontinent itself, right? Some of the big projects that came from there. Um, there are only four or five that still sustain. There are like hundreds of projects launched, right? So if you look at, obviously, Polygon is a big one. But other than that, you can count in one hand the ones that are still sustaining, shipping, and you know, making an impact. So you have, obviously, uh, our friends at Biconomy, our friends at Frontier, and then there's Push. And then after that, it's just, I mean, other than that, it's just router protocol, right? Other than that, there's no, not, none of those guys uh, that actually, uh, and obviously, so they've all evolved and, gone to do a few a few different things and then there's a bunch of new projects that have come uh, so to that extent uh, you know irrespective of how the market is where the market is extra right now which is a bit bearish given all the german uh, news and the mount Gox and stuff i mean it's it's it, it you know been an interesting journey and, and and hats off to the team for sort of you know uh, sticking to the course and continuing to ship uh, in spite of all the ups and downs over multiple cycles and, and, and making an impact in a, in a pretty interesting uh, key critical space that the infrastructure space is, right? So uh, that's something that uh, uh, super happy to sort of look back and acknowledge and be grateful about. Obviously, uh, the team part of it, you know, uh, and obviously Shubham and I go a long way back, we seven, eight years now. Uh, and then I just said again, I haven't we haven't known him for more than two years, but again, it seems like I've known him forever. Uh, so, uh, so, so again, grateful to have such such great teammates uh, in this journey as well. Uh, so, I, I'll stop now. I can keep rambling because he gave me a very broad, broad question. So I'll just pass on the mic to one of these guys and let them. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We'll get back to you. How about? Uh, Shubham Singh, our CTO, can go next. Interesting, Ram. Thanks, thanks. For such words, and thanks for Nila for organizing this, to be honest, right? Uh, like, so far, the journey has been interesting. We started with uh, a small scope. We have broadened it so much that, like, things are getting uh, out of hands. Like there are a lot of people now uh, contributing on a lot of fronts. Uh, we started as a interop asset bridge focused protocol. We are now a generalized messaging infrastructure, exploring EVM, non EVM chains. So just trying to sort of like build on overall philosophy of decentralization. If if you are assuming instruments around. Uh, crypto to be de decentralized new chains are the future more and more chains are the future right so i i guess 
interrupt plays a pivotal role and the team has been focused at it like uh, for for almost 3 years now we started in 2021 uh, january so interesting times like we have seen multiple of these bear and bulls multiple of teams to sort of like claim and go but then we have also seen few good players who are sort of like trying to build something relevant and we are also aspiring to do same thank you thank you so much uh, could you tell us a little bit about um how you discovered router and how you started uh, how you joined the team basically and started building uh, at router protocol so this was basically the first project about for me and ram were doing something like running these bots between uh binance ftx bybit and then then we realized like this uh, there there are a lot that is happening in decentralized side of things right and we had shifted our focus to centralized trading more around that side of things so we we thought like let's try to do something interesting we started with the dex we realized there were issues we launched the first dex on on polygon uh we thought we realized that there are issues migrating liquidity from ethereum to polygon that sort of like inspired us to start router so me and ram we co-founded router and then from there it's the present <laughs> Look yeah. how far it's come. That's amazing. Yeah, one more thing to what Shubham said, right? I think uh, you know, back in 2017, 18, we were very much in the decentralized space. We are we were one of the earliest to build a relayer on zero vector, which was the early iteration of Dexes, right? And uh, so this was before Uniswap had cracked the AMM model. Bancor had cracked the AMM model. Uh, yeah, a lot of you probably won't even recognize what so this Bancor was before. Is. This was before Ram. This was even before Curve actually. So we yes, yes. we before were Curve, before yeah. Curve to do a stable coin Dex back in yes. 2018. And yeah, I have yeah. been with Ram like for almost since my childhood. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Makes me feel old, but yeah, it's. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's crazy. I, I remember uh, uh, Shubham and this other colleague of ours, uh, this two, three, at, this, at that point in time, young, fresh out of the college kids sitting in the stairs and, uh, while I was coming up. <laughs> the, uh, at that point, I was coming to Bangalore from Delhi, right? So I yeah, was working out of the Axel launch pad. And so that's how I first met Shubham. For the longest time, I thought he was Saurabh because there's another guy called Shubham. And, uh, that Bengal, <laughs> that guy was a Bengali, and Shubham was such a Bengali name, right? So I kept calling Shubham Saurabh, and I calling him Saurabh Shubham. <laughs> so, it's fascinating, and then you know, we, you know, from a product perspective, done a lot of things, and and you know, at some level, they've been focused on having fun and building something of value because. I, I guarantee if, if we were more focused on capturing value and uh, making a lot of money, we would have probably been happier in some ways, but the journey <laughs> may or may not have been as much fun, right? Because uh, back in 2017-18, we were running effectively what was a fund, but obviously it was not structured as a fund, it became a fund, so we had to sort of get out of that. Uh, we did an index token where we launched on-chain index, uh, an index product for the top 15 cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of math that went there, design. Um, again, when everybody was launching ICOs, we were very clear that we wanted to do this token. Again, did not hit the market as, uh, did, not, did not do as well as it did. With 0x, again, we built one of the first stable coin relayers. Uh, learned a lot from that experience uh, and then pivoted to what Shubham described, which was the uh, um, arbitrage uh, seeking between perps. Uh, those are the days, right, when we were uh, on a group with SBF, 
sang sbf set up group and give us access to okyo servers right and uh, uh yeah uh, and then we had a direct line to uh, arthur hayes and cc etc uh, and then we basically running uh, a stat uh, delta neutral uh, uh, arbitra strategy uh, for perpetuals right? but so you could do that so the beauty about the space right back in 1920 a couple of guys with an idea could come and build these things uh, it wasn't uh, at this point in time you know any any niche you look at in crypto whether it's mev whether it's amms whether it's uh, zk you have a ton of phd's and you have rocket scientists you have a lot of very big uh, volumes of institutional capital so it's no longer artisanal right so I, in fact a lot of the projects that uh, took off back then if if they try to do to stuff today they wouldn't really be able to take off right even from the dexes and the uh, other projects right so so the right place right time uh, to be fair right and then uh, interop uh, sandeep nelwal of polygon did play crucial role in sort of ident- identifying this and flagging this opportunity uh, uh, shubham had been telling me the, about this back in 2018 right now there could be a lot of change we should sort of uh, connect them and start interop with them but at that point it was such a very nascent conversation Uh, but then late 2020 sandeep sort of sent us down this path and so this is also an interesting story so actually how i know venki is we used to work at same co-working space right and venki was part of the center in 2018 i asked him one question right is there a way to sort of like connect two chains together so he told there might be a way and i asked him what if we could build a chain itself to connect these two chains and right. what if it could be cosmos chain and this was 2018 right and now in 2024 we are doing cosmos chain connecting to chain that's amazing that's amazing to hear that uh, yeah. uh, you thought of this at 2018 and now we're, we've come so far and it's amazing and we're going to have our mainnet launch in a few weeks as well and yeah it's so great this to be here with all of you with great minds and uh, having this conversation uh we also have ajay sir here ajay sir the floor is yours please introduce yourself and uh, give us your uh, thoughts about uh, and uh, of course your journey with the router hi everyone hello vanilla hello everyone thank you for having me here i mean journey has been fantastic i mean If I go back, I was a veteran. I was serving the military for almost served almost twenty uh, two years, and uh, been part of blockchain for a long time actually since two thousand fourteen because there was some assignment which had come to me. I was stationed up in the mountain somewhere in Himalayas, and I was deep in cold reading about Bitcoin and what they're doing and kind of facing certain things. and uh, never had dreamt actually that you know some day i would land up in 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 web3 space so yeah i was transitioning from uh, military and uh, that is where you know got connected with the founders and uh, jelden well i really liked the team i thought uh, what better than you know joining web3 than going to a normal a uh, corporate life 9 to 5 I had done it enough i was like this is really nice and these guys bunch of builders hustlers motivated bunch i needed this lot only so yeah i mean um, been uh, almost two years now seems like a lifetime as ram was saying a lifetime of knowing these people and the uh, journey has been fantastic i mean i'm really really impressed with the with the minds we have around and with the kind of uh, talents they are the kind of uh, ideas they have at times you feel that wow i mean this is literally the 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 space science and all those things you know because as ram says we belong to a older generation kind of a thing but uh, it's superb i mean building in this space being in this space and uh, being part of this journey In fact, uh, when I joined Router, uh, we were transitioning from the proof of authority bridge to this interop uh, solution, and uh, had to build everything from scratch. And it is beautiful. I mean, amazing. That's all.
transition to the uh, bridge is a critical step but it's also an important beginning uh, so the transition to the chain from the bridge right and and you know apart from all the tokenomics and uh, all the important things that are necessary to uh, make sure that the community is happy and the community is rewarded for the support uh, it, it's all related right i think the big part thing that sort of really gets me going is the and a lot of us is just the conversations we're having in turn around the roadmap the things we can do how the interop space is evolving how that's front and center and then how sort of uh, an overall ecosystem around router is developing right and 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 the interop space itself router's journey v1 was a bridge v2 was a chain v2 is a chain uh, v3 is going to be uh, even more broad in scope it's not a chain it's more than a chain right it's got to be overarching it needs to uh reflect the fact that the bridging space the interop space is now um far more sophisticated it needs to give users and developers the flexibility to sort of figure out what security layer they want how they source their liquidity how they do the settlement um this is this infinite flexibility while at the same time sort of hewing to the principles of what this is supposed to be about which is around chain extract right it is about making the end user experience completely seamless uh, you get into a hyundai or a bmw or whatever you have a steering and a joystick and the same sort of abc's right accelerator brake clutch what so at the end of the day a lot of it is about abstracting out the complexity pushing all the bolts and the nuts and the wires and the engine and the grisly stuff under the hood right for the developers to dive into dive into um uh, and and so to that end there is a lot to be done there's a lot that's evolving there's a lot of new paradigms modularity is a paradigm restaking is a paradigm uh, how you source liquidity that's a paradigm and uh, mm-hmm. now that router is an ecosystem uh, there are a lot of projects that are building on top of router uh, and they are addressing various problems they could be something as trivial and critical at the same time like meme coins yesterday somebody was talking mm-hmm. about something punky rabbits right is a meme coin that a community member is launching uh, there are a few other ecosystem projects that we are more closely involved with uh, uh, there is a yield optimizer slash ai play called foliovex there is a lrt lst reaggregator stakeys and there is another very interesting degen project which is building a liquidity layer that we also saw, sort of got uh, started working with recently uh they're doing exceptionally well so there's a lot of stuff in the near term roadmap medium term roadmap in terms of product and build an ecosystem and then in the long term you know, shubham and uh, venki and abhishek and some of the uh, tech uh, uh brains that cooking up some fantastic stuff in terms of the roadmap uh, i'm still yet to grok the true complexity and depth of all these things but uh, uh, this is a fascinating time i mean that So I just want to basically uh, draw attention to Router Nitro, which is uh, Router Protocol's extremely successful cross-chain bridge, right? So uh, what I want to ask is, we know that Router Nitro supports both EVM and non-EVM chains, right? Um, I just wanted to ask, maybe this will be more relevant to Shubham. Uh, what challenges did you face while achieving this compatibility, and you know how? did we overcome them and also another thing is that uh, the web3 space has a lot of different cross chain bridges right so uh, how does nitro distinguish itself from these other bridges so really like it's a very good question actually so and very relevant question so with nitro right so i'll, I'll first tell you the genesis of nitro why nitro is even there right when there are 100 different asset transfer protocols how how it stands out so so we started sort of like we started simulating one thing like uh what could be the benchmark if we are assuming the security is same for everyone we are assuming the rent of liquidity is same for everyone then where exactly you can optimize things So, which boil down to the cost of executing a transaction and cost of 
time cost of that transaction like how much time it takes and how much time uh, it takes you to settle the transaction what's the cost involved like the base cost so given we have router chain in place right router chain comes with a vm in place uh, where you can write logic in the bridging infrastructure itself there are now new protocols which are adapting this like xlr has adapted this after our launch uh, even uh, zeta chain is going to adapt this standard so we were the first one to launch the logical layer in interoperability itself like think of a signal is going from one chain to another you can have logic in place to intercept that to manage things at that level right which eventually allowed us to move a lot of redundant part given we are connected to tensions right there will be some redundant pieces or redundant informations which will be on these tensions we sort of like moved everything to router routers logical layer or route a smart contract on the router chain which uh, helped us to reduce a lot of gas footprint in these contracts and led to sort of like reduction of cost by by a lot so um, our latest benchmarks are like we are the cheapest bridge with same level of decentralization as of xlr or as of zeta sin or any any properly decentralized systems out there so one another aspect of that was like how we were able to optimize for for the time so another ux problem is there that users don't want to wait for 20 minutes for a transaction to go through it uh, so what we did was we devised something we call as reverse verification so what if a party could run for a transaction and if the transaction is verified correctly we'll re- reimburse the parties and this is sort of like this has evolved to a solver model now world is calling it intent centric approach but again we started way earlier where we were sort of like running these market makers who were fronting the liquidity if the order got executed correctly and got verified correctly on router chain they were used to get reimbursements in in the source chain where user deposited the money right and with some commission now this has evolved to a new hype word or buzzword itself like intent centric protocols so uh, so that was the genesis of very, Metro. yeah please so there is very a uh, very interesting story here so obviously i mean we guys shipped it out and i still remember my first those initial calls uh, you know because we this had to be showcased to the partners and the world outside and uh, we used to do the demo for nitro and uh, it used to be like you know i could see those sparks in people's eyes like is there somebody sitting there inside and doing this somebody picking it up and just depositing on the ends and the next question is to be is this uh, decentralized yeah our chain is backing it up and it's so cheap how are you making it so cheap i mean so for whatever shubham just mentioned it was fantastic i mean still i mean right now uh, one of our best products and it is i say i mean literally it's a blessing to sell this it's it's so good i mean it, it doesn't take effort i still remember i mean it used to be only the demo next used to be like okay fine yeah now we do the partnership so that's what was you know shipped out of this package so cheap i mean so for whatever shubham just mentioned it was fantastic i mean still i mean right now uh, one of our best products and it is i say i mean literally it's a blessing to sell this it's it's so good i mean it, it doesn't take effort i still remember i mean it used to be only the demo next used to be like okay fine when are we doing the partnership so that's what was you know shipped out of this factory that's amazing to hear Yeah, yeah. It was very interesting, and then uh, thanks to Ajay sir for his kind words. And I, I feel the product has lot of potential. Like, even so, how how we started even 
putting pressure on this direction right so how it evolved like why we should do low latency transmission so we started exploring something with injective back then if you could allow users to util- use a perp exchange which is on cosmos chain so perp exchanges require very low latency you should be able to send your trades almost instantly so then you cannot wait for a uh, consensus to go through and then relay the message if you could just relay the message and take care of the verification later on so that was the genesis of this idea uh after that i guess across uh, sort of like also started chasing that narrative there were other bridges also like who started focusing on the intent side of things but i feel that the ecosystem still is very mature uh, we'll will talk about that as well maybe some some in some future videos <laughs> yes yes of course and yeah i think our viewers now understand uh, how router nitro came to be uh, so thank you so much for the insight and uh, yeah actually Yeah, I guess uh, partnerships. Uh, the team has done a great job, right? I think uh, with 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 tech, uh, with any great tech company, right? The partnership team and the tech team have to be in sync, uh, and and that is a key prerequisite if you look at any of the big uh, the, the good. Uh, Uh, business facing folks understand the technology very well and you can speak uh, to how that you know is better than the other offerings in the market and uh, equally the engineers are also aware of uh, uh, what the market needs are and be able to pivot right and and often times that is a work in progress and and then, you know we've sort of over the last couple of years with ajay sir coming on board we've been sort of moving in that direction and at this point touch wood there is a seamless uh, uh sort of uh, synchronization between the business end and the uh, engine room uh, right and and so that hopefully that has helped us in good stead because uh, you know one of the things that really i, I find astounding and that's i guess uh, the nature of crypto right uh, when we had an early product when we had uh, sort of a uh, Uh, early version of a v1 bridge etc uh, you know the market looked at us uh, in a very different manner uh, now it is unfortunately it's a bit of a bear market uh, i don't know what market it is but you know at this point there's so many integrations coming down the pipe as i mentioned osmosis and the uh, you know, bitcoin integration and then solana and then starkware and then sui and even algorand etc coming down the pipe uh, just crazy the amount of integrations uh, and i just hope you know from a community perspective and and you know at the end of the day um, uh, the the it has to sort of somehow uh, come back to the token price for the community to sort of uh, uh, because at the end of the day 90% of the community is in for the token price right so i just hope in the, you know I, and i hope this is not you know uh, not something that uh, uh, is in a, you should never talk, talk about token price right? but i sincerely hope for the sake of the community and for the a uh, team that has been working so hard that the market turns because once it turns right the, the, all these innovations that you've been building up and you know, launch in the next month or so going to just explode and get reflected in the uh, overall uh, valuation metrics of the project as well which i think is a key metric because at the end of the day every project in addition to building a technology that solves a problem has to generate value for the community for the developers that are building it right uh, and 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 i guess that is a key uh, the, the part of the uh, whole uh, compact if you will right um, so so this i think we head in the right direction uh, partnerships we've sort of cracked a number of vital partnerships across the spectrum and uh, uh, in the run up to the minute and just immediately after the minute we'll see a lot of these uh, being announced and uh, you know Uh, hopefully we'll continue to keep building as we have always so one more there is a very like, yeah shubham please go ahead yeah. go ahead guys so one more key thing that we closed and i guess sir helped us close that to be honest was so 
the validators right so yes, ajay sir yes. was leading the charge of uh, onboarding validators we onboarded almost 50 validators in testnet wow. out of which we promoted 25 validators to sort of like run on our internal or alpha main beta main Uh, very tight with estimates, but again we achieved most of the estimates. So far, I'd not say anything which delayed for so much, which which would have added to like so much of a regrets. But uh, th- there are things I would have ex- expected differently in past, which did not go as as per my expectations, like from tech point of view. A key integration uh, with aggregators is one of the sort of like setbacks I felt was uh, there. We could have unlocked uh, like more more possibilities, more integrations on that front. But again, these are fine. You manage it one way or another. Uh, whenever this is the right time, mm. uh, you'll you'll get get yourself into these integrations. But this is more about timing, to be honest, and prioritization. Like something which is of our priority might not be of others. That's more around timing rather than setbacks. Right, understood. Uh, okay, I think we've uh, discussed a fair bit about uh, the ins- the conception of uh, router protocol and the whole journey behind it. And I think our viewers have had their fill for this episode. So before we wrap up, maybe we can discuss future prospects. Um, I did, I know that Ramsar mentioned uh, of basically being an ecosystem and having a lot of really interesting projects uh, being built. Um, so basically, my question here is, how do you see the role of Router Protocol evolving in the broader, you know, DeFi and uh, blockchain ecosystem, basically? Yeah, I can sort of rehash what I mis- mentioned earlier and I'll let uh, uh, Shubham and Ajay also given their perspectives. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the intro of space is evolving. Chain abstraction is a real thing. It's necessary for chain abstraction uh, to happen to bring in uh, the vast majority of Web2 users uh, into the market. Um, and, and to that extent, uh, there's also the unifying and uh, unifying developer and end user experiences that's also important right because you have all these silos and uh, it's a very very fragmented experience right it's like you literally have to jump through walls and so to that extent i i think bridges should disappear right <laughs> and 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 to, the we would have done a, done a job well if nobody knows we exist right we should be uh, completely under the hood i mean we'll still be valuable right i mean there are all these companies that make a minor, small part of a component of Boeing or you know, or even BMW. Uh, and, and so, so to that extent, we are we should be under the hood. Uh, so that's why this whole transition is important, right? Uh, routers uh, transition to the chain is critical in that way because uh, the the infra piece, the connecting. Uh, uh, infrastructure that will continue to evolve. Uh, the new paradigms are evolving. Uh, you know, trust trust minimized framework to trustless frameworks. You have zk for the verification. You have uh, settlement layers coming up now. There is that's an interesting opportunity. Uh, there are uh, as a developer, you can choose how you want to sort of um, provide the crypto economic security. How your liquidity is sourced. Right. There's the asset transfer aspect and the messaging aspect. Uh, so the lot of elements there. Uh, what is truly exciting is from a router perspective and from any intra perspective, how have you built out an ecosystem of products that can use router like Nitro? Yeah.